in Frankhofen Institute in Augsburg. So it's the Institute of Reference in, in Composite in Germany. So please, Frank, the, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Manu. <clears throat> As you mentioned, my name is Frank. Um, I'm the chairman of the next session. So this is the last session of the day. Um, it's a session about recycling and sustainability. So a very important session uh, for the day. Uh, we have three presentations today. They are correlated to sustainability and recycling. So I think it's uh, worth to stay tuned for those presentations. Uh, we are a little bit over the time. So just a reminder, uh, you have 20 minutes for the presentation and the questions. Uh, so try to keep uh, your time regarding yeah, the time at the end could be shortly. Um, and yeah, so that would be everything from my side. So I would like to introduce the first speaker for the session. It's uh, Mark Janczyk. Uh, he is the manager of the automotive department of the BCOMP uh, company. And his presentation is about natural fibers. So hello, Marek. So the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Frank, for the introduction. Perfect. Um, so good afternoon. Uh, it's my pleasure to be able to, to present today uh, at GEC Korea. Uh, so my name is Marek Janczyk and I hold the position of uh, automotive um, manager at BCOMP uh, for the technical side. So mainly working with uh, OEMs and T1s in, in automotive to develop and integrate our solutions. So in the next 20 minutes or 15, <laughs> I'm going to try and give you a glimpse of uh, where we see the future of automotive interior going with the use of sustainable uh, natural fiber based um, parts. And of course, with the goal of light weighting, reducing the plastic and overall have more sustainable uh, solution. Okay, so um, Decom quickly to, to present the company. So we are a Swiss high-tech company and we apply the latest uh, composite knowledge uh, to natural fibers for to create lightweighting solutions for several uh, target uh, markets. And for all our target markets, we always um, aim at having and not being only sustainable, but also basically outperforming in, in the, usually in the lightweighting term, uh, the, the, the current solution in this market. Um, so you can see in the middle picture, maybe two of our main products and, and the one of interest today. So the first one the, on, on the upper side is you can see a natural fiber based reinforcement called empty text. So this is kind of our traditional uh, woven continuous fiber range. And then on the bottom of the picture, you can see um, the dry power ribs. So this is, uh, I will come back to it, but this is more, let's say our uh, secret um, product and where we have IP and that enables us to have to reach such high performance uh, also with natural fibers. And basically, so these reinforcements then can be used uh, with different um, matrices. And you can see on the right picture, um, the first one is, is, um, is a door panel from a Porsche GT3, um, where there are both GMT texts on the surface. So this is what you see. And then on the back side, you, you have the power ribs. So this is typically uh, with an epoxy resin. So BCOMP, uh, we started about 10 years ago, first focusing on uh, sports and leisure industry, uh, where we still have a broad uh, client base, but this is often kind of smaller markets, and this is difficult to have a really big impact in terms of, of uh, let's say, environmental impact. So in the, in the last no, yeah, six, seven years, we've tried to move on to um, bigger large scale market, so the, the, the mobility market. Um, first, stopping and, and kind of having a technology platform to show that actually natural fibers could also perform very, very highly, uh, even in, in, you know, in disciplines such as motorsports, where it's very, I mean, performance comes first, basically. Um, so this is uh, our first market, um, where here we, you can see this uh, Tesla, or modified Tesla of uh, electric GT. Um, that has basically body panels made out of our solution. So this is typically the kind of, of, of solutions we target in motorsports. And then from this uh, great technology platform, now we've entered into uh, large scale mobility and we do have a different solution, um, more suited, let's say to very large volume, so very short cycle times. And this is basically the, um, what I will be talking about today mainly. 
Um, so I introduced kind of that we have this product called the Parib. So this is this grid on the B side. And basically this is our kind of secret magic to really get high performance. And we developed it really based on, on nature. Um, so if we, you take a leaf, basically it's a very, very light structure. Uh, it might not seem stiff to you, but let's say for the weight, it is a, a very stiff structure usually. And how it is made is basically you have these uh, leaf veins uh, that are very stiff. And in between, you have a very thin substrate. Um, and the overall stiffness of, of, the, of the leaf is, is good. So bringing that and engineering that into, uh, into let's say, a, a material that can be used or a solution that can be used in, in, to engineer parts, um, we came to um, develop these paribs. And so basically, it makes the most out of, of the, um, let's say, the, the advantages of natural fiber, so very low density and good stiffness. Um, and basically, it enables us to boost uh, significantly the flexural stiffness of the panel where these power ribs are applied on the B side. And so the, the first example uh, in motorsports, I'm just quickly kind of show, I mean, just explain um, uh, how it is made. But basically, with these power ribs and the empty text for thin, uh, thin shell structures, like the body panels, basically, um, you can see here on the front, but also on, on the back, we are able to uh, reach the same flexural stiffness as carbon fiber for the same weight. So we have a equivalent performance in terms of flexural stiffness. And basically then um, it, it's, it's huge for the motorsports because there is more and more regulations to go more sustainable, um, also in terms of costs. So the, the natural fiber solution costs less than, than a typical carbon fibers. And um, yeah, the environmental impact is um, up to 85% decrease of, of CO2 compared to the carbon fibers for the same uh, performance for body panels. Um, then moving also still in, in um, so in motorsports, we are now in, I think, over 20 different series from Formula One to WRC, uh, GT4, um, Extreme E. So, a lot of different disciplines, so this, this is uh, becoming uh, a standard solution. Um, and this is typically also an example a bit different from typical body panels that we, that we target usually of uh, the McLaren Formula One seat of um, Lando Norris um, that is made with our solution and PTEX and, and Paribs. Okay, so we use the Motorsport as our technology platforms and we are now quite well implemented there. Um, and the goal was to really enter large scale mobility and have a real impact through volume. Um, so here you can just quickly see a picture of our solution for automotive interior. So it's still based on, on these same paribs. Uh, they are a bit different. Um, now they are impregnated with polypropylene and usually applied um, with a substrate made out of non-woven natural fiber and polypropylene uh, matrix. <laughs> so of course, uh, this solution target has lower performance that continuous fibers uh, with empty text and also with epoxy in general, but it really targets low cycle times and low costs. Um, so you can see just um, how the, 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 the solution is structured with the paribs on the B side, the non-woven natural fiber PP. And then on the top side, either it can be wrapped with standard um, materials that you find inside your car, like leather, uh, Alcantara, and so on. Or we also have a kind of the um, second or plus plus solution where we can directly make a visual part in one step also with uh, the empty text instead of, of the cover uh, stock materials to have uh, a full natural fiber-based uh, solution that is directly visual. So the process to make those parts is compression molding. So the material is heated uh, outside the tool in a heated station and then transferred onto a cold tool. Um, and then the, the press closed, you form the part and you have the possibility of course to also uh, back inject uh, retainers, um, re uh, additional ribs if it's needed and so on. And so all this process really happens in less than a minute. So typical parts that are targeted with, with uh, this solution are most parts that you see when you sit inside your car. So the, maybe the door panel, uh, some pillars, uh, the, the lower IP, the seat backs, uh, also some chunk trims. 
Okay, so this is a good picture to have a bit of a close up on, on, on the solution. Um, so you can see on the left, the, oh, on the right, sorry, the A side. So this is the natural fiber non woven, uh, which is already used in, in automotive um, today, but without the paribs. And on the B side, you can see the paribs. And so basically, the paribs, what they bring is uh, a large light weighting opportunity. So we do decrease quite significantly the surface weight um, or the aerial weight of the natural fiber non-woven that is used. And then on the left picture, you can see um, kind of the two solutions, how they could be used. So on the uppers, I will just quite switch to this picture. I think it's better. So on the other, on the header of the seed pack um, of this uh, post-star precept, um, typically you see that our solution is uh, kind of hidden, I would say, or covered with the uh, standard cover stock materials. And then the lower part is made with the empty text directly in one shot. So you have the visual parts also with, with our empty text continuous fibers. Um, so the advantage solution, lower weight, up to 50% compared to traditional injection molded plastic in automotive, usually in the range of 35 to 45 for most parts. And then compared to um, non-woven NFPP, uh, we can still lightweight with the paribs up to 30%. So this is uh, a large weight reduction, and this is quite important as I will come back to it uh, uh, in a few slides. Another big advantage is of course the plastic consumption that is uh, heavily reduced because first we use um, less volume of materials because we have better properties. Um, so we have less volume of materials anyway in the car to reach the same uh, panel um, mechanical performance. And then also since about 50% weight fraction of, of our solution is made with natural fibers, um, we reduce further the plastic content. And of course, this has quite an impact on the overall eco footprint or usually we, we measure it in uh, a global warming potential in, in kilograms of CO2 per square meters of, of materials. Okay, um, moving over just to give a bit of a representative ID about um, how it compares to other uh, baseline solutions. So you have a graph on the right side. Um, the left column is a standard injection molded polypropylene we talk, so um, quite the baseline injection molded um, panel in, in automotive of 2.2 millimeters. Then in the middle, you got uh, 1,600 uh, gram per square meter uh, NFPP. And then on the right, you have our solution with uh, 700 gram per square meter of NFPP, so much lighter uh, non woven, and the power ribs. And all these three uh, solutions have an equivalent lectural stiffness. And so what this graph shows is on one hand, um, on the right side, you have the error weight. So you see the 50% weight uh, decrease compared to injection molding and 30% compared to the NFPP. And on the other side, you see this uh, global warming potential. So in terms of kilo, kilo gram of CO2 equivalent per square meters, uh, where we see also um, a very large decrease up to 62% with, with our solution. Um, so this is a post-star preset, so I'm allowed to talk. Usually we're not allowed to talk uh, about our projects, but this one, uh, they've communicated on it. So it, you can see, I mean, I'm a bit better maybe at the panels that, that we can target. So the door panel, um, the seat back, also here the um, still the door panel, um, and then also some console side uh, panels and so on. Okay, um, now coming a bit more to, towards the subject of, of this uh, session with uh, sustainability and, and recyclability. So first is that nat uh, natural fibers and flax fibers that we, we use in our solution um, is, is very good since basically when it grows, um, it stores the sunlight energy, right? And it uh, captures um, CO2 and so basically each uh, flax fiber captures about 1.6 times their weight in, in CO2. This to create, of course, this uh, stiff uh, and tough and lightweight um, fiber structure. And so basically when, when we um, 
incinerate um, flax fibers at the end of life um, in, in a waste to energy plant, so meaning um, a plant that recovers uh, the energy. We are able basically to use this sunlight energy. So the, the fiber stores it for a while, then you burn it and it release. I mean, you, you get this energy back. So it basically it becomes a, a, a biofuel. Of course, we are not using only natural fibers, so we, are, we need the matrix. Um, so in our solution in automotive, we use a polypropylene matrix. So we start from, from flax, from the plant, um, and then so our current solutions are made with uh, virgin or petroleum-based polypropylene, but we're also now uh, developing uh, solutions with uh, bio PP and recycled PP. So if we look at the solution, um, we have the parives, the NFPP, and optionally also the empty tax PP as, as an organo sheet. So this is the whole solution. So we produce the parts, the seed pack, for example, and then at the end of life, um, it can either be burnt um, in internal energy recovery and use this as biofuel to basically fuel the electric car where we're going. Or we're also working on, on upcycling uh, for injection molding with uh, some ground pellets. Um, so this is also in development. Um, also the scrap during production because in compression molding, we start from rect rectangular blanks. And so basically you get scraps around the parts. Uh, um, and so all, also this can be grind and and use uh, for composite products. Um, Marek, you have two more minutes. Okay, I'm all, almost done. Um, perfect. So usually when we talk about energy recovery, to, um, it's considered kind of uh, like the lowest possible way of, you know, of uh, recycling materials. Um, and sometimes it, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's comprehensible, but with, uh, with our solution and flax, it's, we think it's a good way and, and circular way because basically you, when the plant grows, you catch um, the CO2 and then you use it as a biofuel. So it's a circular, um, um, basically a circular um, a cycle. Um, of course, um, then with the PP, if it's petroleum based, then you take resources from the soil and you release it new CO2 into the atmosphere. So this is not uh, the best. But so right now we have a mix of the two and we're working towards having just bio PP also uh, to have a full um, basically bio solution uh, that is able to have a completely uh, closed cycle with the CO2 being uh, sequestrated and then um, at the end of life being able to use the parts as, as biofuel. Um, Yes, so these are some, some calculations that basically uh, saying about the same thing. So it's still the same comparison with the injection molded PP panel, uh, the NFPP, and then current solution with petroleum based um, plastic. And then on the far right, um, this is uh, with 100% bio uh, based polypropylene. So this is a cradle to gate uh, assessment. And we see that we can get to, to negative value if you account for the sequestration of, of the CO2. Um, and the energy recovery. Okay, so I'm gonna end here. Um, maybe I just want to add one more thing is that, um, I mean, recycled plastic is usually the, the current trend in, uh, in automotive. So it's a lot pushing towards uh, recycling and so on, but it's currently it cannot cover uh, on its own the growing demand and, and the need. So uh, we think that uh, natural fiber is definitely uh, the way to go of course cut some part of this plastic and um, also reach light weighting which has a huge impact <laughs> functionality i won't have the time to talk about it uh, but basically for every kilograms of weight reduce about 6 to 12 kilograms of co2 equivalent uh, over the lifetime are cut of the car so the light weighting is still let's say the main um, important aspect uh, in addition to the sustainability of the materials itself Thank you very much, and uh, I'm would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Marek. Are there any questions from the audience? Yes, there is a question. Yeah. Recently, I saw an article about BComp that the Greeks 
bio epoxy that you developed bio epoxy with grit. So bio epoxy, and when you compare that with with bio PP, from the LCA perspective, how much difference is there in terms of CO two emission? Um, so that's a good question. I'm I'm not sure exactly because we have a bit of a different approach with, uh, let's say, in automotive in with the PP solution we developed internally also with with the polypropylene, whereas in the um, the let's say thermoset applications um, we don't have any in-house uh, thermoset solutions ourselves. So we work with uh, different um, um, yes manufacturer and suppliers. Usually it's chosen by by our customers directly. So I. I won't have a specific number to, to give you now, but I can have a look uh, on the one that, that is mentioned in this article if you uh, send an email to us. There is also a question from the chat uh, that refers to, do you planning to use any other uh, fibers, for example, from agricultural bio waste or only flex fibers? No, we, so we also consider uh, to use other fibers. Um, so mainly, um, so in automotive, to be closer to the um, to the parts uh, manufacturing itself. So to cut basically the, the transport. Um, and so geographically, uh, maybe flex fiber is not the one that makes the most sense in in every region. So we also um, uh, targeting other types of fibers to be closer uh, to the final uh, parts production. Okay, thank you. Is there another question from the audience in Korea? No more questions from the audience. Let's move on. Okay. Then, thank you again, Marek, for an interesting talk. I think it was a nice presentation, and I think you showed very good that the CO2 saving is quite huge that you can reach with the use of natural fibers. So, looking forward to that technology. Thank you very much. Okay. Then I would like to introduce